Christmas everyone. We have a busy day planned for today. We need to finish the kids cubby house for their Christmas present tomorrow. Um, it's not going to be 100% finished but the cubby house itself will be. So there will be the cubby house, the slide and the rock wall. And then we'll put in the, um, the sand pit and the swings at a later date, so later in the week. But I'm just going um, out to feed Cooper his morning bottle. Um, I'm going to feed the sheep some snacks. We got some apples in the green waste bins from the supermarket and I had some pre-cut apples. <laughs> because, you know, it's really hard to cut apples yourself, apparently. Um, <laughs> So I'm going to feed them to the sheep as a treat to try and get them a bit more tame around me so when there is a lamb born it will be easier to move them um, into the sheds. So it will be easier to move them into the sheds which is where we put them for a week so the lambs can get strong enough to escape foxes and eagles which are our main predators here. I've just come from inside in the mornings, um, in the early mornings while the kids are asleep. I usually get online. Um, I'll start editing the next day's video, um, I'll upload the previous day's footage and I'll answer any questions um, or comments that have been left on our YouTube page. But we were actually tagged by Homesteading the Hard Way asking us why we chose the breed of animals that we chose. So we've got sheep, we do have cattle on our property, we've got pigs, we've got chickens, ducks, geese, guinea fowl and quail. Um, and I'm going to go through why we chose each one of those breeds for you today. So I'm going to answer why we chose the breed of sheep that we chose. We have Dorfer and Wiltshire Longhorn. They are both self-shedders. Now we didn't necessarily choose these breeds, but they are the breeds that we wanted, or we did want the Dorfer breed. We wanted them because we didn't want to shear. Shearing is a lot of work that we don't want to have to take on and shearing sheep aren't really eating sheep or I'm sure you can eat them but the hair sheep they are specifically bred for their meat and not their wool. They are incredibly low maintenance and so far they've been really good mums and lammers. We have lost a couple but you're going to lose a couple no matter what breed of sheep you have. Um, but yes, we chose these because they are self-shedders. But these particular sheep, they were left on the farm when we moved in six months ago. So um, if we were to build our own flock, we would have chosen Dorpers. Um, but we've been happy with the Longhorns too. The Longhorns are a little bit more skittish than the, than the Dorpers. The Dorpers can be handled much easier. Um, we didn't choose our breed of pigs either. These are a mini pig or they are mini pigs for Australian standards. Um, pigs can get up and over 300 kilos, but these ones will max out at about 150 kilos. Now I got the girls, Millie and Rosie. I actually got them before we moved into the farm and she held on to them for me um, until we moved in. So we brought them to the farm on the first, I think we were here for four days before we brought the pigs home. Um, and they were pets um, and I don't recommend having pets on farms or farms like this, homesteading farms, because um, usually you bring animals to your farm to eat them. So we um, gave our word that we wouldn't eat these girls um, because they were her much loved pets, but she had to move interstate where she couldn't take these guys. So instead we're going to breed them, um, which is where Hank comes in. I found Hank online too. Um, he was also a pet. He was hand raised from a little piglet. Um, and he's an indoor pig usually, but not here on our farm. Um, he lives with the girls, but he was raised inside um, in a family situation with other animals and little kids. And he was very, very, very loved, but he was escaping because he was an only pig and he really wanted some company. He hasn't actually escaped while he's been on our farm. He escaped the first day that we put him in the pen because he kind of didn't really realize what was happening. But ever since the first hour where he escaped, he has stayed in with his friends. So that's really good. But all these guys were free, which is why we have them on our farm. Um, one day we may venture into a larger breed pig, something like a Saddleback. Um, 
that's probably our breed of choice if we were to purchase our pigs but these guys were all free they were looking for a forever home um, but we are intending to eat them or eat their babies sorry wrong choice of words we are intending on eating their babies not them um, and what we like about them being a mini pig or a smaller pig is that it's only 150 kilos of live weight to process so by the time you're um, done everything you need to do to prepare a big pig for the table we'll probably end up with about 70 to 100 kilos of meat which is more than enough for our family because we don't eat pork all that often we do eat a lot of charcuterie so that's what I want to do with these guys and then we'll have a couple of roasts as well because every now and then we do enjoy a pork roast now our chickens that's a bit of a mixed story um, but first I'll start with our geese and our guinea fowl I've got those breeds I don't think there are many breeds of guinea fowl in Australia but you can get different colors um, and I just got what was offered to me it was hard to find guinea fowl at the time and I was offered a foursome two pairs of two breeding um, guinea fowl and we have lost all our females but I have incubated eggs and we have increased our flock so hopefully there's a couple of girls in there and that they can pair up as well um, and the geese they are pilgrim geese and again that's what was offered to me at the time I just wanted a guard goose um, but I got two pairs and so far they've been great they haven't been aggressive towards any of us but one has kissed Zara on the cheek um, and that was when she got too close to the nesting mum but I've got quite a few different breeds of chickens in here I've got eyes of browns which were given to us um, and I've got it's either a white eyes or a laying white mixed breed hen so they are for commercial farms but I bought them on our <laughs> thank you <laughs> I bought them on our suburban block because they were five dollars each they were about um, 12 to 18 months old when I got them and they were just basically being retired so um, we took them on and we brought them here the chicks that you can see are mainly mixed breeds they are from um, the white layers with a white rooster he's not a leghorn but he has a bit of that in him I suppose he was hatched out from these white layers um, and they've given us a heap of different colors um, which has been great we don't mind that at all they're great layers they're quirky to look at so that's fun I've also got Aracanas for the blue eggs I've got Morans for their dark brown eggs I've got uh, a few more chicks I think there is a Barna Velda in there also for the dark eggs um, some light Sussex some silvered Sussex even though we're having some issues with those chicks at the moment they seem to be um, dropping off the perch um, and what else do we have we have one Brahma and we have possibly one wine dot uh, I had bought three dozen wine dot eggs but they didn't hatch they weren't fertile and then when I um, approached a lady saying that hey they weren't fertile she put the blame on me um, even though all my other eggs had hatched in that incubation batch um, and then she said I could pick up some more eggs from her and then when I asked her if we could swing past she said oh all my chickens got eaten by foxes so to that lady I sincerely hope your chickens didn't get eaten by foxes um, and the ducks we've got Muscovy ducks so they are kind of like a cross between a duck and a goose um, and they lay beautiful eggs and they've been great mums so far we've been really really happy with them you can eat them as well so if we have too many drakes we'll put them on the table um, I haven't really eaten too much duck I do like duck but I haven't really eaten it or cooked it much I've only cooked it once so it'll be interesting to um, play with something new in the kitchen um, if that happens we've only got two ducklings that have hatched out of one batch and then we've got another um, mum sitting on about 14 eggs so hopefully we get some more from her so I chose the, um, some of those breeds for their coloured eggs I want to cross the Morans with the Aracanas so I can get an olive egg. They are fairly new here in Australia, um, but we're really excited with playing with something like that and having a beautiful rainbow of eggs in our egg garden. We're asked by homesteading the hard way why we chose the breeds of animals that we had, and he was particularly interested in our cattle. Um, 
he had seen them pop through in one of the videos and um, I don't talk about them much because they actually aren't ours. Um, we adjust the bottom 40 acres of our property to a local dairy farmer and he puts on his um, steers to fatten up and send to market. Now, um, we do want to get cows, but we didn't want to get them straight away because we have brought in so many animals and we're still learning and it's a lot to manage, especially when Paul works full time. He has got six weeks off at the moment, so he has seen him around more than he usually is. But he's usually at work four days of the week. Um, and we do commute, or he does commute into the city, so they are big days. He leaves before um, dawn and he's usually back um, at around dinner time. So we try to fit in some more tasks or some more chores um, when he does get home, but they are big days. And we didn't want to add in cattle to that just yet because we've never had cattle before and we are learning even though they are very low maintenance they are very low maintenance I didn't want to be stuck here at home and have the cows escape for example or something go wrong with the cows and not know what to do because they are a big animal and I'm not sure if I could wrangle one especially with three kids so the cattle that are on here I believe are a milking breed which I believe is like a Frisian crossed with I believe and don't quote me on this, an Angus. So that way you can eat the dairy cows so they have what I think, what I think they do from what I can gather is they AI their cows, um, they get straws from Canada that are sexed so they AI their um, girls with these straws and they'll get the majority girls um, and that's their herd that they can keep building up to milk. And then when AI season is over he runs a bull in um, and he'll get all the rest pregnant that didn't fall pregnant with the straws or didn't come on heat when he was doing the AI. Um, and I believe it's an Angus bull that runs with um, the Frisian. So I'm not 100% sure. But basically the deal is, um, is that we get half a steer in the next month or so. Um, and that's our payment for having the cattle on our bottom 40 acres. When we do get cows though, we are thinking of getting something like a Bell to Galloway. I adore the Highland cattles. Um, and while there are some in our region, in the Gippsland region, I'm not entirely sure how they'll go in summer here because they are used to cooler summers um, and we can get really hot here up in the 40s and above the 40s and sometimes for a week. Um, so I'm not sure if they would survive something that hot, but they will be incredibly hardy through our winters because it gets really cold here. We don't get much snow in Australia, but that mountain over there, it snows on that mountain. So we do have the Alps really close. It's about 40 k's as the crows flies. And sometimes we get snow on the farm itself. So I know that they'll be able to deal with our cold winters, but so have these guys. They haven't had an issue with our cold winters. Um, it doesn't, you know, if it does snow here, it will last an hour or so, it won't last. It won't even last all day so um, we don't really have to worry about it being too cold but I think a, gal a belted galloway would be something that I'll be interested in if we were to buy a heritage breed cattle um, otherwise probably just Angus really if we're going to pay for an animal we rather buy a heritage breed because they're usually hardier tastier and they usually have a better resale value um, but when we get things for free or like the chickens, we got them really cheap in our suburban property. We're happy with, um, uh, we'll, we'll take anything like the pigs. There was our introduction to pigs. So we got what was free to us. Um, and if we really enjoy keeping pigs and eating the pork that we produce, we'll probably get um, a heritage breed like the Saddleback. Um, that's it for why we chose the breeds that we chose or that we have here on our homestead.